Unpopular opinion time. I like Vocaloid. I like most Vocaloid, but I don't like all Vocaloid, and I probably don't like some of the Vocaloid that you like. Everyone has their tastes, and everyone has their vices. I'm not expecting every bum off the street to be able to plug into a Niki song and feel the universe with their third eye the way I do on a daily basis, and I sure as hell don't expect everyone to vibe with the actual schizophrenic insanity of Mambo P. And even if those people are wrong, I can at the very least empathize with them. And so, to prove that I'm not just some old head elitist, I'll go through a few producers whose body of work I, for one reason or another, don't really vibe with and highlight a piece of music they've made that I actually think is exceptional even so. Everyone include some of your hot takes and exceptions to the rule in the comment section, baby! Let's go. Bang, 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 bang. I'm starting with a big one that will definitely get me in trouble, but I really don't care for Enbuna and by extent Yodoshika. Compared to some of the people that I'll feature later, I don't think that Enbuna is aggressively awful or anything, but I would characterize Enbuna as being very unextraordinary. Their music does typically have a theme statement, which again is more than I can say about most of the others I'll talk about, but the problem is that I don't ever feel that Mbuna is ever saying anything particularly intricate or complex. You could, for instance, characterize a lot of their songs to be about grief, but unlike Yuri Kennan, Harry P, or even the breathing god himself, I don't think that Mbuna tends to offer an interesting perspective on death. They write songs about being sad about passing, and that's fine, but when you don't dive too much deeper than that, and you have a rather monotonous sound, that only takes you so far. And, uh, yeah, that's my other Enbuna problem. I feel that Enbuna suffers a bit from a problem with their composition. They aren't by any means a bad composer, but I feel like their tones and chord progressions don't tend to vary much between their popular songs. Listen to Ite, Deep Indigo, and That's Why I Gave Up on Music back to back to back, and you'll feel how overtly similar they are as pieces of music. When you couple that with the recurring themes and lack of narrative complexity in Enbuna's body of work, what results is me being often unimpressed by their sound. That said, Made to Fall is an absolute joy. What a beautiful piece of music. Made to Fall addresses my two major problems with Enbuna deftly, and as a result is not only easily my favorite Enbuna song, but just a fantastic piece of music outright. Like many other Enbuna pieces, Made to Fall is about loss. But it isn't really about the expression of grief, but the denial of it. The song makes literary allusion to the story of the Red Shoes, which is about a little girl whose vanity results in God cursing her. She becomes so consumed by her adoration for her beautiful red shoes that she loses sight of the world around her, becoming numb to the death of loved ones or to the scorn of others. Made to Fall doesn't retell the tale, but instead seems to use that imagery to suggest that the protagonist would like to separate from the world around her, to deny the pain of having lost someone dear to them. The red comes from the sakura petals that cover her feet as she stands in place, unable to move on as she recalls memories of better days with the one she loved. Ultimately though, you can't run forever and we must all face reality. The song posits that denial only hurts us, and that we must all own up to the inevitability of passing, which is a far more interesting take than the simple expression of grief that a lot of other Mbuna pieces offer. Compositionally, I also find there's a lot more going on here than with a lot of their contemporary work. It doesn't fall back on as many of the same chord progressions, and Mika was used fantastically to complement the instrumental. She sings very détaché and has a light staccato that auditorily builds upon the idea of dance that the lyrics suggest. Made to Fall is a great control of pacing and writing, and shows what I think is the platonic ideal of Enbuna's work. I think that Deco 27 is a little uninspired. Deco has in the past demonstrated that they're capable of making interesting compositions, but I find that the actual quality of their work fluctuates heavily piece to piece. And if I'm to play Armchair Detective for a minute, I think a lot of that comes down to inspiration. A lot of Deco music doesn't have much of a grand point to say or a story to tell, and I think that rather directly corresponds to compositional monotony. Case in point, I love Milgram, and that's composed by Deco 27, so what's the difference? I'd say it's theming. Milgram has a story, characters, and emotions that are prescribed that Deco can use as a muse to write some fantastic pieces of music. That sort of creativity and fervent energy just doesn't come across in most of their boring love songs about failed relationships. Make no mistake, Deco is a skilled producer on the musical side of things, but I think they often fail to be an interesting composer and an even less interesting lyricist. Production-wise, their songs have great sounds that are mixed well and are sonically pleasing most of the time, but I think that they often fail to captivate beyond that rather bass level. Now, I could just cheat and say that my exception of my distaste for Deco is Milgram, but I do in fact think that's cheating, and furthermore, that would be a disservice to a Deco song that I really do like quite a lot.
MKDR, Molso Kansho Daisho Renmei, is hypnotically captivating. I don't turn to MKDR for a mind journey about the world. It really isn't that complex, but I do think that it's complex enough for the composition to have a real light to it that a lot of deco lacks. At its heart, MKDR is a very similar point to Love of Love by Love for Love by Pinocchio P. It's about two people who are in a loveless relationship, who stay together because while they may not necessarily love each other, they do in fact like the idea of love, and in turn, fear the world without it. Now, to be fair, I think that Pinocchio P ultimately says the more nuanced thing about the subject matter, but the idea to begin with is an interesting place to live, and I don't think that Deco does it a disservice per se. And indeed, more interesting here than Deco's pen is the composition of the song itself. MKDR is a very, say, metronomical song. I don't even know if that's a word. But the music falls very heavily on the quarter notes, with beats 1 and 3 emphasized in particular in the verse, and the quarter pulse in general taking center stage in the chorus. This couples really well with the visuals, which feature quick and snappy changes, again on that quarter note pulse. I mean what I'm about to say is a complete compliment, but it makes the song feel tiring. There's an exhaustion that comes through the beat, with every hit of the quarter note feeling like another step taken. It does a very good job at conveying the feeling expressed by the words. Going about in a loveless relationship, a daily experience where you know that something's wrong, but you can't do anything about it, but keep walking, is exhausting. And I feel that through the song. Put it another way, the music feels heavy. Like each hit of the bass drum is pushing down on me. With MKDR, I feel like Deco really makes the music come off the page and come alive. Miku's tuning was also done very well into the ends of building that feeling. Like in Made to Fall, she's rather staccato and short, which only further emphasizes the beat. MKDR does what I think Deco is best at, creating a sonorous experience that puts you into a certain mental state. Ultimately, the slightly more interesting message than normal, as well as the clever plotting with the Delusion Sensation Compensation Federation itself being a metaphor for the strange relationship, make MKDR a very unique and quite lovely experience. Next. Ha, hey, ho, he. I do not like Nero Kajitsu. I think that Enbuna and Deco are boring a lot of the time, but I wouldn't say that I have any active distaste for them. They just more often than not fail to capture my attention. That said, Nero Kajitsu has on multiple occasions made me actively think that music was a mistake. Am I being hyperbolic? Yeah, definitely, of course I am. But am I wrong? Eh, no, I don't think so, and I'm gonna die on this hill. I can rather simply surmise my problems with Nero Kajitsu, and they can extend to my problems with a lot of contemporary Vocaloid music. I find Nero Kajitsu to be aggressively whiny. An expression of grief or discontentment is fine, but how that's expressed and what therefore you choose to say is vital to how much I can respect your message. In other words, your theme's credibility relies heavily on why you're discontent and what you're doing about it. I find most of Nero Kajitsu's music to be very unfocused, which muddies its message and what little of its message does come through often feels unjustified to me. I could and have decided that I will definitely make a video dedicated to explaining this in detail, since a lot of people really don't seem to get where I'm coming from with this, but to quickly give you a bit more reasoning, I think you can pretty easily compare Waswald to Bad Bye by Coman and see the disparity between two songs that tackle similar ideas. A youth who used to have a vivid and bright childhood who has grown up into a bitter adult who turns to self-destructive habits before eventually losing all faith and killing themselves. However, at the end of the day, I think Waswald fails on almost every level that Bad Buy succeeds. I'll go into it more on a later date, but I think that there's a maturity and complexity to what Komon is able to say in Bad Buy that Nero Kajitsu is definitely trying to reach, but never quite lands for me. Which is why when Nero Kajitsu steps away from that sort of writing about those kind of messages, we get an absolutely lovely piece of music. Night Rule kind of astounds me. If you showed me the song in a vacuum, I'd probably assume it was a Haramaki Gohan song and would never in a million years guess that it was actually from Nero Kajitsu. The song is about a boy recalling and going over his feelings regarding a special encounter in his life that changed him forever. He's sad and aimless, but one day meets a manic pixie dream girl that, for one special night, lets him have fun and enjoy himself. He never tells her how much that meant to him, and he never sees her again. He tries to find her, waits for her, but she's gone and they will almost certainly never reunite. But when he was with her, he remembered what it was like to be alive. And even if their meeting was a once-in-a-lifetime accident, that's something he can take with him forever into the future, where he'll start the tedious and tiring process of living once more. The composition is dreamlike, using a lot of synth and bright and poppy noises in the soundscape. Kavu is also tuned to be very light and breathy, painting the picture of the whole experience, that night, being like a dream. That's why it feels so aggressively like the style I'd associate with Haramaki Gohan, and that's a flattering comparison, believe me. The music works in tandem with the lyrics, and the simplistic and flat art style mixes with that to get a great theme piece. I also love the message. 
No matter how hopeless or downtrodden you are, it's always possible to learn to love again. Not love another person, per se, but learn to love being alive. The boy isn't jumping for joy at the end, but he's not consumed by agony either. The night is over, and he can try to live again. Put another way, it's hard, but there's always second chances. Always opportunity. Sometimes all you need is a change in perspective. It's a resoundingly hopeful message told in a beautiful and complex way. You can't just get over things. It's hard, and you need to learn to cope. But it's possible if you keep trying. Night Rule stands as the antithesis to what I hate about a lot of Nero Kajitsu's other work. It's focused, has a clear and consistent message, tells itself in a universally applicable way, and has a composition that suits the tone and theme. I love it dearly. Just one more round of contrarian opinions, and I'll let you all go. Eve is the amalgam of most of my complaints up to this point. I think Eve is a horrible same sound problem with a lot of their songs. They become a monotonous mush that often, though not quite as extreme as Nirokajutsu, feel a lot more like complaining than expressions of misery, and that can be attributed to the composition not serving the lyrics and theme very well. Where I contrasted Waswell to Bad Bye to show how to handle similar ideas with more grace, I think you can contrast something like Eve's dramaturgy to, of all things, a Deco 27 song, and say that Ghost Rule tackles the theme of misplaced identity in a far more nuanced way than dramaturgy does, and this disconnect between composition, tone, and message seep into most of Eve's other music as well. It isn't like Eve's committing war crimes here, but I find his body of work incredibly boring and without much in the way of intellectual complexity. And yes, I know that sounds horribly elitist, but these problems really do infect most of Eve's library, and can readily be applied to people like Nero Kajitsu as well. A lot of people will say about these producers that they don't care that the storytelling is bad because they simply like the sound of the composition and production, and that's perfectly fine. But at the end of the day, even if you choose not to care about them, the music does have words. It has a movie. And whether or not you care, it is telling a story and presenting an idea that can be judged as such. On a raw, sonorous level, I think that Eve makes pleasing music, even if it often lacks variation song to song. But when put together, I think they fail to build a very substantial whole. Most of the time. Anyways. Gunjo Sangha is outstanding. In a single word, the song is a celebration. It calls to mind all the hardships of life and how they're treatable with the outstretched hands of others. It acknowledges that life will not always be easy, that there's horrible pain and anxiety waiting for you in the days to come, and you'll have no control over when or where it strikes. But if you embrace it, if you walk with others and keep living on in spite of that, you'll find time and time again that the world is beautiful. I will say that the PV is just kind of nonsense, it's my understanding that the song was made for Project Sekai, so maybe it relates to that in some way. But regardless of my lack of understanding of what literally is occurring, the coloring is fantastic and conveys the vibrant energy of the piece, and the visuals reflect the tone of the song well in the abstract, even if they are a little nonsensical in the literal. The composition is a little simple relative to Eve's other works, but that goes hand in hand with the genre of the song, and the simplicity complements the theming. The melodies are complex, but they are resolute and powerful. The production side, on the other hand, is great. I love the mixing of the percussion. In particular, it's spacing across the soundscape, and the instrumentation is lovely. What a fantastic, fantastic piece of music. I hope no one took offense to this, and if you like something I don't, that doesn't make you the devil or anything. My favorite producers are Niki, Yuri Cannon, Poa Poa, and Skop, and I'm sure one of you doesn't like at least one of them, and that's fine. As long as we can have discussions and reach across the aisle sometimes, then all is well. And sometimes, even the people you don't fancy can create something really, really special. Still don't like Waswald though.